Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics, a place where you can improve your understanding of physics with confidence. In today's lesson, we will discuss important past paper questions on radioactivity from October-November 2020, paper 1. For this question, it is given to us that a nucleus of sulfur collides with the nucleus of molybdenum. The nuclei combine together and they emit a single alpha particle and the nucleus X is formed, as you can see by this nuclear reaction. And question is asking us, we need to find out what is this nucleus. We also need to understand this symbol is for alpha particle and only one alpha particle is emitted in this nuclear reaction. So we can write down this is alpha particle. So 2 is the atomic number and 4 is the mass number. So we can write down this is alpha particle. We need to be clear with these basic symbols. So this is alpha particle. Next thing we need to understand a little bit about mass number and atomic number. Mass number simply is equal to number of protons plus number of neutrons in the nucleus. So simply we can write down this is equal to number of protons plus number of neutrons in the nucleus. And the symbol we use for mass number, this is capital A. Next thing we need to understand, what is atomic number? Atomic number simply is equal to number of protons in the nucleus. So it is simply equal to number of protons. And the symbol we use for atomic number by convention is Z. So this is the symbol. Now, if we subtract atomic number from mass number, we can simply find out number of neutrons. So n here is for number of neutrons. So we can write down this is equal to number of neutrons. So these are the basic things we need to understand in order to answer this question. Now for any nuclear reactions, mass number on left side has to be equal to mass number on right side. First of all, let's try to write down atomic number and mass number of alpha particle. Alpha particle in fact is helium nucleus. So it has two protons and two neutrons in the nucleus. So its atomic number is two and its mass number is four. And for particle X, let's say its atomic number is this box and its mass number is also this small box. Now the next step is simply we need to equate mass number on left side has to be equal to mass number on right side. Simply this simple equation. So this is plus now from here, first we have equated mass number. So if we add this mass number, the total mass number here, this is equal to 126. But here is plus 4. So this has to be 122. So this is 122. Now we need to repeat the same process for atomic number as well. So here we have 16 plus we have 42 and this one has to be equal to the atomic number of nucleus X plus atomic number of alpha particle. Now if we add these two together this is equal to 58. So 58 minus 2 so this one has to be equal to 56. So our answer for this question is A. And this is nucleus of barium. So this is nucleus of barium. So in fact, this is barium. You don't need for this question, but if you are just curious, so this is barium nucleus. For this question, we need to find out quark composition of an anti-neutron. First of all, let's try to understand some basic symbols. You can see this small u. This is for up quark. But if there is a small bar at the top, means this small bar. 
So small bar. Small bar simply means like this line. If this is at the top, so then this is up and T cog. So this basic difference we need to understand. Let's look at another example now. So this small d is telling us this is down quark. But if there is a bar at the top, so then this is down anti quark. Next thing we need to understand the quark composition of proton. Quark composition of proton it has two up quarks and it has one down quark. And neutron we also need to understand the quark composition of neutron. A neutron has one up quark and it has to down quark. Also let's try to understand what is the charge on up quark. One up quark has charge plus 2 by 3 E means 2 by 3 of the charge on electron. And one down quark has charge minus 1 by 3 of the charge on electron. So these basic things we need to understand. Now if we have proton and I ask you what is quark composition of antiproton. Antiproton. Now simply you can say that each quark now become antiquark. Means we have up quark. So antiproton has up antiquark. It has two up antiquarks and it has one down antiquark. So this is quark composition of antiproton. Now if we need to write down the quark composition of antineutron, we need to follow the same steps. First of all, what is quark composition of neutron? Neutron has one up quark and it has two down quark. But now this is antineutron. So these are antiquarks. That's all what we need to understand. Now what is this? This is simply proton. So this diagram represent proton. And this diagram is representing neutron. Simply we can write this is neutron because it has one up quark and it has two down quark. Now how about this? This has two up antiquarks, one down antiquark. So this is anti proton. So this diagram represent anti proton. And this one is anti neutron. It has one up antiquark, two down antiquarks. So this is anti neutron. And question was asking us to find out which diagram represents anti neutron. So this is our answer for this question.